even, oh God, in disobedience, oh God, you are still mindful of us, oh God. And we thank you, oh God. Help us to not take your grace and mercy for granted, oh God. Creating us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. Purge us and cleanse us, oh God, from all unrighteousness, oh God. Everything that is not like you, oh God. Let it be less of us and more of you, oh God. Let us decrease that you will increase, oh God, that you will get the glory. Lord, hallelujah, you have heard the request, oh God, of Sister Pat, oh God. Touch right now in a mighty and a special way. Bless her on her job, the co-workers, oh God, that are standing in the need of prayer, oh God. Keep them, oh God. Bless them, oh God. Let her be an enlightening example, oh God, on the job, oh God, and cause them, oh God, to cry out, what must they do to be saved, oh God? That they see the peace and the joy, oh God, that she have in this great salvation, oh God, that they all want to get a hold onto Jesus and not let him go. Oh God, continue to bless our pastor in a mighty and a special way, oh God. Strengthen him, oh God. Continue to bless his vision, oh God. Let us gather with him and unite, oh God, and be on the same page, one accord and Bless his companion, Lady Jones, in a mighty and a special way. Continue to strengthen her, oh God, in mind, body, and spirit, oh God. And the things that you have set for her to do, oh God. Bless her, oh God, as she endeavor, oh God, to be a light and example to the women of this church, oh God. Bless, oh God, hallelujah, our assistant pastor and his family, oh God, his wife, oh God. Bless each and every member, oh God, of this church, oh God, and those connected, oh God, to this local assembly. Bless leadership in a mighty and a special way. Bless the people of God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that they will have fear and reverence for you, oh God. Hallelujah. They'll take this great walk of salvation serious, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to be ready for your soon coming. Let us lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, oh God. Hallelujah. Judgment begins at the house of God. Help us to get our house in order, oh God, that we'll be lights and example to a dying world, oh God. Let us love one another. Let brotherly love continue, oh God. Remove envy and strife, oh God. Every foul spirit does not like you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we bind it in the name of Jesus and we release your love, oh God. Your joy and your peace. Help us to walk uprightly in love and joy, oh God. That, hallelujah. The word says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee, oh God. Help us, oh God, to love, oh Lord, that we will draw the sinner man in. And even those in backsliding conditions, we ask that you restore their soul. Give them a mind, oh God, to want to be saved. Our unsaved loved ones and family members. Let us demonstrate the power of the anointing, oh God, that is in us, oh God, and stop limiting in you and putting you in a box, oh God. Help us on today, oh God, to understand, oh God, how precious the treasure that we are carrying in this earthen vessel, oh God. Touch right now, oh God. Send your anointing that destroys your. Let everything be done, hallelujah, under the anointing, oh God. Let nothing be done in vain glory right now. Remove self and flesh out the way, oh God. That you will get the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. We love you. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing, even in our midst, oh God. And we're asking that you take her to higher, take us to higher heights and deeper depths in you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children, our youth, oh God, our nation, our country. Bless us going out and coming in, oh God. Trouble on every side. Hallelujah. But we know, hallelujah, that the blood still works. Hallelujah. We're applying the blood to each and every situation in the name of Jesus. Touch sickness and disease right now, oh God. Send your healing power right now, even in the midst of us, oh God. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all get to heaven, we will sing and shout victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Jesus, amen. All of my 
trials will be over Amen. when I see Jesus. Amen. Y'all can sing along, hallelujah. When I see Jesus, glory. Amen. When I see Jesus, amen. All of my trials will be over. When I see Jesus, amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, verse number 11. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 11. Uh, Deacon Pollock, would you uh, let them know outside that I, Bible class has started? <laughs> they may not be aware of it. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 11, um, the Bible reads, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, yes. therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Let me just read that one more time. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart, heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So, uh, what Solomon says here is that this is one of the reasons that uh, evil begets evil and people continue to do what they do because um, they don't get punished right away. Um, matter of fact, I remember that uh, I used to train dogs. I used to train dogs and I, I was kind of a German Shepherd guy and I would train them and, and um, uh, one of the lessons that you learn is if you're going to teach them something, you have to teach them right then. If they do something wrong, you have to because if you come an hour later because they did something wrong, they don't make the connection. They don't, they don't know why. They don't know why you why you punishing them. Uh, you have to make sure they know, and understand what you're looking for. That was that old style of dog training. I know they don't even do that no more. We got dog whisperers and things. Matter of fact, my my my, my baby boy is much better at training dogs than I ever was. That fellow, he studied it and he just knew how to do it. It's totally different now. But back then, you had to do it a certain way. But anyway, the point I'm making is that um, people tend to think that uh, if there's no punishment, immediate punishment, then they keep doing stuff. Because, you know, I start thinking, why? Do the saints keep doing things that they know is wrong? I mean, they know. I mean, maybe it, maybe it, 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 it isn't even sin, but it's just not even convenient. Mistreating people, saying things to people that are hurtful, because there's no immediate slap on the hand. Then, you know, they keep doing it. There's no immediate punishment. That's, I, you know, I, that, that is one of the problems for us is that um, our God is long suffering. He's long suffering. Because, I mean, what would happen if the minute you did something wrong, there was an immediate boom? How would, that, how would that impact our behavior? How would things change? I, I, I think if, if, if there was an immediate punishment, an immediate adjustment, now I'm not God, and I'm not saying I'm smarter than God. God know what he's doing, and I'm gonna get to this in a minute. I know why, I, I understand what he's doing. But if there was an immediate bush, you would think that, okay, that would help people not do it. He clearly knows this is a problem. I just read the scripture. He clearly knows that's part of man's behavior. So, if he knows this is the behavior, why not just give us a whooping right away? Why not just give us a whooping and say, oh, don't you do that no more? <laughs> Actually, I will tell you that 
most of the time, there is an immediate something. Usually what it is, is that it's the Spirit of God convicts us. Amen. We get that conviction and we just ignore that. It's like that gentle little tug and we're like, okay. You know, and you, and you know you feel a certain kind of way and then the Spirit of God is kind of letting you know you should not have said that. You should have done that. I'm surprised at what people will do. Of what people will say. It surprised me. I'm like, man, you would think that the Holy Ghost would tell them, you know, that they would feel that or something, you know, that the Holy Ghost would say, eh, don't do that. Even after you do it, you would seem like you'd get some conviction. Something. So what I'm realizing is, would you say, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, we're getting it, but what we must be doing is what? We're ignoring it. But I'm telling you right now, that's dangerous. Because he's trying to teach us before he have to <laughs> minister truly. That's a very good point. That is a very good point. That's right. You don't even hear it. You don't feel it. It is you grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, because just like you said, you you can you can get you can, you can get it trained where let me tell you what I figured out. We can train our Holy Spirit to be very to, we can train ourselves to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Or we can train ourselves to ignore it. Or to not notice him at all. That's why Paul had to say, stir up the gift. We got to recognize, we got to, you know, you got to recognize when the Holy Spirit is doing something, but you can train yourself to be sensitive. Train yourself, and you can train, you can train yourself not to be sensitive. That's very good. And it's, it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous because he's given to us to show us, to help us. I mean, I've had people say things to me, and I'm thinking, no, they keep saying that, and they're joking, they don't know that hurt a little bit. I mean, it just seemed like the Holy Ghost would tell them, I really don't like that. <laughs> that really is not nice, man. Joe's looking like, who said something to you? <laughs> He's got the sword out. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, what you say, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't like that, and, and I wouldn't tell you no way. <laughs> but but uh, so I know if they'll say something to me that is untoward. I know they what they what they're saying to other folks. Amen. I, I know what they're saying to other folks. I mean, um, you know, folks who take it upon themselves and think they're kind of on, on the slide chastising you. You know what I mean? They kind of on the slide, kind of telling you, rebuking you a little bit, just under, under the kind of undercover rebuke. Yeah. I'm like, boy, well, folks, we we are something. But my general point is, my main point is that there's there's something going on that causes that. There's something going on that caused that. And like I said, you can extinguish it, extinguish uh, what the Spirit of God is endeavoring to do. But you are not actually sensitive to his move. Uh, yes, Deacon Walter. I'll just read the thing about that. It's about some of the men is fully set. He doesn't do evil. Yes. He goes back to like lead, not to understanding. So that information can lead to your understanding. Right. The same way I think as a child, I was mischievous just by nature. Yes. And my parents got to the point as a just chastisement. Yes. And they just look. They have a spectrum, they just look. Right. They, they helped you get really sensitive to, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I, I've seen people like that and manage their children like that. And I've seen other folks that just, 
I mean, they whooping and everything. <laughs> it's just still coming off the ceiling. <laughs> they, they, they bouncing them off walls and everything. They just keep on going. So, I mean, uh, you know, so there, I'm sure there are reasons for that. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's a reason why that occurs. But, so, let me continue here. Because we, we, we are making a point here. But verse number 12, it says, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that what? Yeah. Fear God. Which fear what? But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall uh, he prolong his days, which are a shallow, because he feareth not before God. And I said that this was kind of a tie from last week. It ties us into, uh, into last week when I talked about, when I talked on the fear of the Lord. But see, I think the connection, though, is, and as, you, uh, as I read that first verse, he said, because sins against the evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is, full, is fully set in them to do evil. What, and remember that part of what I said, um, and, and we talked from last week, there, uh, there was a, a verse, and I don't have it in front of me, but um, where it says that we could be motivated um, to avoid evil because of fear of God. Um, that's a paraphrase. But it's because of fear of God. And if, uh, so you see how that first verse, verse 11, connects to that, though? Amen. Sins against evil work is not executed speedily. So what happens? There's no fear of punishment. Lord have mercy. There's no fear of punishment. And I tell you what, um, what God reminds us if we read these scriptures is that um, he's not forgetting anything. And I'll tell you, because he's bringing us to perfection, um, uh, you know, that there are things that are going to happen in our lives to help us get that stuff out of our life. He's working, and he'll bring, I mean, I believe he'll allow tribulation to come. Matter of fact, uh, uh, we know that the Bible says that uh, he will chastise us. He scourges every, every son. I mean, so he's a good father. Uh, we we will get a whooping. Amen. We, we will get a whooping, and, 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 and some of that, you know, we begin to whooping. Don't be talking about getting behind me, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, actually, with God, God's trying to work something out of us. So He says. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse number 42. Matthew 24 and 42. Jesus says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch therefore, for you know what you you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Verse forty three. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known and and, and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. So, I mean, it's a great example, isn't it? Amen. If you if if you know when the person is going to come steal your car. Wouldn't you be sitting on your porch? <laughs> I mean, if they sent you a note and you got an email saying they're coming to steal your car at 12 o'clock noon on Thursday, <coughs> you call work and say, I'm, I'm going to be late. <laughs> or, you know, you, would be, you wouldn't allow that to happen, would you? Amen. So he continues, he says, Therefore be ye also what? Ready. For in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. Now, what I, the reason I raised this is because, you know, um, sometimes I think we get to going and get to doing and we have a church and we're celebrating and all these things. 
And we're forgetting that Jesus is coming back. We can have a great time and do all that, but look, what if Jesus come back just when you are cutting somebody down with your tongue? Shouldn't we be concerned about that? Shouldn't we be mindful of that? I, I mean, you know, uh, when he said come my people, I want him to catch me praying. You know, but most of us, want, you know, we like to be in church and we like to, you know, we want to be doing something good. And, but we don't know when it's coming, so what do we need to do? Be ready. Be ready. That's what he said. We got to be ready. So tonight I'm talking about diligence because I think that's what we lack in our culture, in our Christian culture, in our Christian walk. It is a lack of of diligence and recognizing that Jesus and managing ourselves that Jesus is coming back. And we don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, so if you don't know when it's going to happen, he's, he's telling us right there. He said, if the good men of the house knew what time when this was going to, when the thieves were going to come, he would, be, he would be ready. But since you don't know what time, this, this is why, this is, what do we do? When we leave the house, what you do? You lock your doors. Then what, then some of us, we lock our doors, we set our alarm, we got our cameras going. <laughs> we, we tell Alexa, turn on the living room lights. <laughs> we do all kinds of things. Because we're gonna be gone, we don't know what's, if they're going to try to hit us while we don't. Why aren't we having that same measure of diligence about our life, our walk with God? If, Lord, I thank you. If we were that diligent about making sure that we are what? Ready. Ready when Jesus comes. Ready. That means that I'm going to be really mindful of what uh, what I do all day long. I'm going to be mindful. I'm going to be thinking about that. That's why he says, them uh, that fear God, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them. I'm, I went back to Ecclesiastes. You don't have to go there. Shall be well with them that fear God. Why? Which be fear, fear before him. In other words, they're conducting themselves in a way that they recognize that he is God. And I'm, I don't want to do anything that's going to dishonor him. So if Jesus continues here and he says, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. Who then, here we go, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, uh, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink and with, uh, with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, the term hypocrite actually comes from a Greek term uh, that they used for those who were actors. They were actors, and they pretended. And it began to be applied to people in this moral sense who pretended, who were not really serious about this, who were not, don't put a guard over their mouth. Why, why wouldn't you put a guard over your mouth? Who, who, are, who are not careful about how they treat saints. I, I, I'm a man. 
I keep saying this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just amazed at how we treat each other. It just, I mean, as if, you know what it reminds me? It reminds me of this parable. As if Jesus ain't coming, I'm going to have time to pray and get myself together. I'm going to get forgiveness for that ugliness. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this ugliness, but I'm going to, I'm going to get forgiveness, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to have time, you know, I'm going to have, I'm going to have time, I'm going to get that under that fast. I'm going to get me a, about a two-day fast, and I'm going to take care of all that stuff I've been doing. Is that what we're doing, is that what we're doing here? It's like, um, I found out some clinicians, uh, had a process where um, they would wait for an audit, wouldn't do their paperwork, they would wait for an audit. And, and when they would get the, with the audit, they would get notified what <coughs> files are going to be audited. And so they were just doing the ones that was going to be audited and left the other ones. And, you know, we think, okay, we pass an audit and all that. <laughs> paperwork ain't done. Paperwork is not done. That's hypocritical. Hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. That's not, we, got, we got some saints like that that they, they just going to, you know, they're going to get it done. They're going to get it right at the right time. Just before Jesus come, I'm going to hop to my Shonda, jump on my Honda, and be ready to go. <laughs> Just when Jesus come, when, when he cracked the sky over here, I'm like, ta 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 God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that also shall he reap. If you shall, if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. Are we reading the same Bible? <coughs> yes. Matter of fact, as far as you're concerned, I'm not talking about you. That's the only way I can rationalize in my mind because I know I mean, I'm like, I'm not teaching out this Bible all the time. I just can't believe people are not getting this. So what I got to figure is people just have a way of saying, that's not me. You know, this is why they used to say, when you come to Bible class, don't, don't, don't break a pitchfork. What did they say? You ever heard this before? Break a rick. There's a pitchfork, that's other folks. You can pitch it from you. you break a rake, you gotta pull it to you. That's right, I hadn't heard that before. You gotta, too many, too many people come to Bible class and they, they're like, yeah, y'all better get right. You can get it, Pastor. You, you better cut that out. <laughs> Deacon Polly. This, this is real good, Pastor. And so <laughs> It is. And, well, I'm glad and, to hear that. And, <laughs> so, you know, besides the lack of, of fear of the Lord, I see a lack of love of the Lord. It's just it's a lack of love. You know, we were kind of talking about that last week and that actually uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I think you, they, they kind of work together. You start off fearing him, then you end up loving him. Amen. When you, when, because you got to learn about him. Then you, then you, but you start off fearing it. You got to start off with respect. It was like um, um, I was telling you about a football coach I had that was mean. This guy was tough on us. But I'm going to tell you right now, every one of us love him to this day. And I'm talking 40 years later. Every one of us love him to this day. But we had to start out by fearing him. Yes, Pastor. I think, I think, you know, sometimes that we're not careful. The scripture said, don't think so highly of yourself. They yes, right. And I think that some people are fucked up, and they really think highly of themselves. 
Yeah, they, they look at me, I, and they think they're into this perfection, and everything excellent, and so somebody else, they're, they're quick to judge, or they're quick to look down, or they're, they're quick yeah, to Yeah, there's, a, there's a spirit of piety, but yeah. it's, it's almost like the spirit of the Pharisees. Yeah. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's what they were doing. We, we end up becoming like them. And having, having that show of holiness, but actually don't really understand it, don't really comprehend it, don't really embrace it. Let me, let me move along here. I got a couple other verses. Actually, I have a lot of reading I want to do. This Second uh, 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 Peter chapter three, uh, verse number three. I, I mean, I, I literally almost I was going almost out of verse one just read the whole chapter. I mean, just read it to you, just in case you haven't read it. I was just going to read it. I decided against that. But I'm going to read most of it. <laughs> All right. Verse number three, it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For, Lord, I thank you. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Once again, that goes back to that scripture I read in Ecclesiastes. And here we are in the New Testament. He said, this is, he said, look for this. He said, look for this. They're going to be scoffers. And, 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 and uh, what's, the, what's the verse that says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Those that get comfortable and really get comfortable with, uh, uh, um, uh, we used to call it the, it's the small fox, foxes that destroy the van. Get comfortable with the small foxes. Get comfortable with things that we don't think of. Uh, it's like the, the, the weights that don't so, that so easily beset us. The weights, get comfortable with the weights. Lord, I thank you. They say all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Peter continues, for this they, they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perish. So he said, first of all, they don't even know scripture because uh, everything is not continuing from creation. Uh, this world was destroyed, and why was it destroyed before? Because of sin. Because of wickedness. It was this God destroyed the whole thing. And let me tell you something. Um, every time I see a rainbow, I'm reminded of that. And we're reminded of one thing, that is that God would not destroy the earth again by water. But that don't mean he's not going to destroy it again. He gonna, uh, we're also reminded that he destroyed it. And he's going to do it again. Well, that's what, that's, that's what Peter is going. He says, verse number seven, he said, but the heavens and the earth which are now Lord have mercy. The heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. What does that mean to you? That right there. What does that mean? <coughs> right. God, you see, it, he see it all the same. It's us that's mindful of time. It's us that thinks about time. That don't mean anything to God. That's a human construct. That, but so, uh, he says, uh, but, be, be, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And he's saying don't be ignorant of it, because he don't want us to get to counting days and saying, well, you know what, he, he, kind of, he hasn't got here yet. What's going on? 
uh, he's telling you, uh, look, he's telling us, uh, don't be looking at the days. Don't be counting the days. Don't be counting the weeks and the months. We got something else we should focus on. He says, verse number nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, he said he's long willing, he's, he's long suffering to us word. God wants us to come to repentance. He wants us to grow in grace, right? He wants us to grow in grace. He wants us to develop and to become what he's called for. Verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Thief in the night, what does that mean? Without warning. Without warning. Very good. Without warning. We got to remember this, brothers and sisters. I mean, literally, do you know he could come tonight? He <laughs> said, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse number 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Seeing this, understanding this, what kind of people are, should we be? How should we be living? And is that just on Sunday? I mean, if I would venture to guess, I would say uh, Jesus coming back probably won't happen on Sunday. Because that's when everybody's looking for him. He didn't church come out. <laughs> but it could. It still could. <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, it's going to be a surprise. That's why every time these people start, um, they, they, they prophesy the end of the world. It's going to happen on this date. I'm looking like, yeah. <laughs> so he, you think he told you? <laughs> right. <laughs> you think he told you? When Jesus said the Father kept that to himself. <laughs> so he kept that to himself. <laughs> All right. Um, let, me, let me continue here. It says, um, uh, where did I stop? Verse 12, right? Where did I stop? I read 11? Yes, all right, thank you. Um, he says, verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You know, the beginning of that verse says, looking for. If they, are we really looking for him to come back? Are we looking for it? Are we expecting that to happen? What happens is we get to live in our lives and going to the forward, making plans and all these things, and it's as if we totally, we totally disregard the reality that one day he gonna crack the sky. And he's going to say, cut my people. Yes, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And one day he's going to crack this guy. He's going to say, cut my people. <laughs> and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Lord. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Yes. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Hi, <sighs> glory. Somebody used to say, when you think about that, then you keep short accounts. You make sure, you know, make sure that I'm mindful of God every day. That I'm considering my walk with God every day and every, uh, all day. I'm, I'm conducting myself as somebody that understands that this life is going to come to an end. 
that we sometimes we live as we live as though we expect to be here tomorrow and the next day and the, the week after that. Like we expect to, you know, we, 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 we expect to put stuff in the landway and get it out in three months. Look, we gotta be we gotta expect that he's coming back. And he's coming back for a church. He's coming back for a clean church, isn't he? Amen. That have done what? So don't be scared to say it. Made herself ready like a bride. Made herself ready. Made herself ready. We we gotta be acting like we're making ourselves ready. That's what we have in these church services. Not just so we can shout and have a good time making myself ready. Yeah. I'm learning how to live right. And I'm learning how to, how to interact with my brothers and sisters, how to conduct myself. How to be slow to speak, slow to rap, but swift to hear. Let me continue. Verse number 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Verse number 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, what? Be diligent that you may be what? Found of him in peace without and is he talking to the church is he talking to sanctified people does that include all of us so there's an expectation he's saying that because there is there is another alternative that we wouldn't be diligent that we wouldn't be found in him in peace that we would not be without spot and blameless. <coughs> this is a cautionary tale. This is you know, warning us. Diligence, diligence. Um, the term diligence, showing conscientiousness in one's work or duties. Being conscientious about what you do or, or in your work or duty. Most of us as employees or employers, we, we love employees that are conscientious about their work. They're aggressive about making sure that stuff is in order. Love them kind of employees. The kind you don't have to watch all day. You know, there's some employees, they do real good when you're around. You know, I, I got, I mean, I'm in one building and I have staff and program in another building a couple few miles away. And I can tell the difference between what happens in the building I'm in most of the time and the one that I'm not in. The one I'm not in. The one that I'm not in, they got a they get a kind of a slippage about them. They kind of um, uh, play around with the rules a little bit. They get relaxed because I'm just I'm not there. That same building, that same facility, there was a time, that's where I was all the time. We only had that one. I was in that building all the time. And everything was tight. And everybody knew. But what I found was when I got in the other building, and I was spending all my time over there, that, uh, what's, the, what's the saying? You said it, Dwight. When the cats are away, the mice will play. And so now what I have to do, I have to get up out of my office, get in my car, Go over to that other building so they see that I'll pop in every now and then. Lord have mercy. Is that what kind of people we are or should be? Should we be the kind of people that are, you know, because I, I got some people, people, they straighten up when the boss comes, you know, they, they, get the, they click off, they change what they were looking at on the computer. They're like, I don't see that stuff. They, 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 they come around and they, they turn off work. But maybe they might have been on the internet doing something else. And they change and they straighten up. 
when I come around. You know, we, we, we shouldn't do God that way. Forget that he's present. That's why we, we talk about practicing the presence of God. That he's everywhere at the same time. That he sees and hears everything. Now that's a scary thought, isn't it? He hear what you say on the telephone. He sees and hears everything. I'm going to say that again. He sees and hears everything. Yeah, don't call me. <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's that's bad doctrine. That's bad doctrine. You know that's not what I believe and teach, huh? I don't believe that. Uh, I, I, I mean, I mean, I just quoted out of Galatians chapter six where it says. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that also shall he reap. I mean, I don't, right? Uh, and if, you, if you don't want that, go to Galatians chapter 5. And it says, The work of the flesh are these uh, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness. And it runs through the whole list. And he said, I tell you again, as I told you before, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And in that list was backbiting and strife and everything. He said, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know. So, I mean, uh, I, I, I know that there are people that believe. I, I've got some, you know, real good friends that, that uh, are apostolic. They call themselves apostolic. And they believe that, uh, yeah, they once saved, always saved. saints will get this together, but you know, are there going to be saints who have been the people that have been born again who don't heed the word? Absolutely. They're going to be for that. We have them now. We have them now. So yes, that'll continue. I see another hand somebody else. Alright. Let me, let me finish up that, uh, where did I yeah. did I stop at, uh, 14. 14. So I was talking about diligence. Be diligent. Be diligent. This is what I want to get off to. Get, get in our mind. Be diligent. Be diligent. There, there's a diligence that needs to occur. There's a diligence that needs to be part of who we are. Let's not be so lax about our salvation. Or let me put it like this. Lax about our sanctification. Convenient sanctification. I'm sanctified when it's convenient. When it serves my purpose. That's not what God wants. God wants sanctification that serves his purpose. Yes. Lord have mercy. That's why he said what? These people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's not who he wants us to be. That's why Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Don't do what they're doing. Don't do that. Um, let me go. Where did I, um, go to Second Peter. I'm going to go to Second Peter chapter one. This is where we'll finish up. Second Peter chapter one, verse number five. Lord, thank you. Now I know I'm. I'm reading verses that that many of you read and have read. Am I right? Amen. <coughs> so what we sh what we've got to be concentrating on is not just reading this word. We got to get. But God expects us to do this. You think He just put put this word here for us to say we read it? 
And we got to remember, he expects us to do this. He expects us to put a guard over our mouths. He expects us to, you know, to, to monitor our tongue. As much as I taught on that, I'm like, I know I'm going to teach on that again. Second Peter chapter 1, verse number 5. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. He said, given what? All diligence. Add to your faith virtue. Um, right from that verse, right there, what do you see there? What, what can you say about that text? What do you get from those first two clauses? And besides this, give them all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Yes, sir. He's saying not only give your diligence, but it takes that and more. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to add to that. So be diligent, be consistent. Mm -hmm. But to that, you have to add faith. And to your faith, you add virtue. See, I would modify that. I think you're on point, but I would modify that just a little bit. That being diligent to add. With all diligence, being diligent to add. This is where I think we're, we're, we're lacking. We got faith, but we haven't added. We're not diligent about adding. Diligent, working on it, making sure that I'm adding to my faith virtue. And as it continues, to virtue knowledge and to knowledge what temperance and to temperance patience and to patience God is we, if we, if we just go back to patience how many of us trying to add patience how many of us trying to add patience <laughs> Man, I want you to know God's listening to us Okay for, 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 for All right, go ahead, Pastor Campbell. <laughs> what you're hearing is some people that have been praying for patience and they know how it comes, and they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> but go ahead. Uh, you got to have some patience out here. You just don't want the patience of Job. But you got to have some patience. No, I think people know you got to have patience. But I think um, so. Patience come really through tribulation. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I mean, you, you don't get patience by asking for it. You, you pray for patience, then you're going to get those circumstances that build patience. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have patience, then embrace the circumstances that build patience. Amen. Take advantage of those things that build patience. You got to be thinking about that. You know, uh, I was trying to get out to Livonia this morning. I was in a hurry trying to get to that meeting. There, um, and, you know, everywhere you turn, there's construction. It was cars backed up. And, 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 and y'all know, I, was, I didn't leave early enough. <laughs> hey, I beat you, though. <laughs> I beat you to the same meeting. Matter of fact. <laughs> So, but anyway, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going and I'm, people in front of me, somebody was in front of me going kind of slow and I was like, what is wrong with you? you know? And, and you know, I'm, now I'm, I'm being transparent. I know this is that none of y'all do this. None, this is, <laughs> none of y'all do anything like this. But, you know, I was, I could feel myself just, uh, I was getting frustrated then. Then, um, um, I got on a freeway that was usually kind of open, and it was backed up. And I was like, man, what is going on out here? And I get up a little further, there's a car flipped over on his hood. Right, right. And the Lord had to remind me of the lesson he taught me before about one time I was upset because the traffic was backed up and it took a long time, really long time, and I found out later somebody had died in the traffic. 
And I'm worried about being late and somebody's not getting home at all. Mm -hmm. That'll help you. Yeah, that put it in perspective for real. And so my practice is when I see accidents, I, pray, I don't just drive, I pray for them. I, I'm not a gawker. Some people just, they, they, they just want to see. I pray for folks uh, that have been in accidents. But anyway, you know, just trying to get to, but I, I have to calm myself down. I have to say, okay, it's going to be all right. I'll be there. You know, you know it's, it's not like it's, it's going to be the end of the world if I don't get there. And then later on in the day, I was telling my wife and I was on the phone. I spent two hours on the phone with AT&T about a billing problem, and they shipped me to five different people. And every person they gave me, I had to rehearse the problem with each and every one of them. Uh, did you ever have this? Yes, they, they kept shifting me around to this person and that person. And you know what? God gave me another grace. And every time they shifted me to another where I could feel myself about like I'm about to come through this phone. <laughs> if one more person asked me, how can I help you? What do you mean? I told the last four how to help you. I didn't do that. <laughs> But, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I told them in a nice way. I told them in a nice way, look, I can talk to four other people. And I'm explaining to them, and do you know, two hours later, I finally, the guy had me on hold. Well, this is my, I had got my wife on the phone, and he, had, he was going to shift us. He's going to transfer us to another department. I had already talked to five people. He's going to transfer them to one more department. He put us in a queue. But you know, when you just kind of hear stuff, and they're talking about, um, you have six minutes for your, uh, before you get, uh, before you, before the next rep, six minutes. I've already been on the phone two hours. I mean, two hours. I'm like, you know what? I don't need that much patience today. <laughs> but didn't you, didn't you realize that you, you have to take those things? And patience is not just waiting, it's how you wait. It's, it's not just patience, it's how you wait. It's your demeanor, your attitude, conduct. So, anyway, I, I will tell you, uh, that phone call ended and my problem was not resolved. And I'm still standing here and, you know, I got my decorum and, you know, I don't want to do anything to them people. <laughs> But you know, sometimes we have those circumstances where that's, I mean, that helps us with patience. I mean, the fact that I was on that phone two hours, I, that was patience right there. I mean, because there was a time when they just shipped me to one more, I done went from one person to number two. By the time I was on number two, I was like, okay, I'm done with this. But no, I just kept staying, kept waiting to try to get it resolved, try to get it resolved. Still didn't get it resolved. But you know what? I earned something, I learned something, I developed something in me. Verse number seven. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, for, verse number eight, for if, I'm gonna say that one more time. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he is purged from his old sins. So he said, if you lack these things, this is a condition. You forgot you got saved. I think sometimes people walk around and they forgot they got saved. They forgot they've been born again. I really, I really think that's a condition that happens. They be like, oh, wait a minute, I'm saved. <laughs> they forgot they've been, they, 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 they're a new creature in Christ. That's, 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 the, that's one of the explanations for what we see. <coughs> Verse number 10. Wherefore the rather brethren, 
Give word. What is it? What is it? Diligence. Give diligence to what? Make. Make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall what? Yeah. Is that the Bible? Amen. And I think it's pretty, pretty clear, isn't it? We got to do what we're supposed to do. But we got to be diligent about it. Not just on Sunday, not just Bible class at night, not just when I'm around saints, but when I'm, when I'm, when I'm wherever I am, I got to be diligent. I got to remember who I am. Don't get loaded into a false sense of security, a false sense, of, of, or into a comfort level where we allow things to happen or come from us that shouldn't be coming from us. Like we've already made it. We gotta do better than that. All right, come on, give the Lord some praise. All right, so uh, just a couple of announcements and then we're gonna dismiss um, council this week. I didn't get a chance to check, but we had been told that there were rooms uh, at the discount, but they may have gotten, they may have gotten uh, taken up. I don't know, I will check again. Yes? Uh, if anybody needs a room, uh, I have one that they can uh, have. So, oh, gotcha. Okay. So, and then there's probably, there may be one more. So if somebody else needs one, just let me know. All right. Well, uh, Sister Joan, okay. Yep. All right. Um, Yes. There are rooms available, but no, no more under the block. Well, you know, because after a certain time, I mean, we're what, two days from the event. They do release those rooms. They release them into the general, general population. Um, so anyway, we uh, starts on Friday in Grand Rapids, um, and our young people are. Uh, I saw something that says we're, we're dancing, and Nehemiah is still going, praise dancers are dancing. Is that true? I'm not hearing enough yeses. I'm not hearing yeses from, where's the praise dancers? Oh, they're rehearsing right now, okay, <laughs> all right. Because I, I saw that on the program, and I know it was told to me, but I hadn't heard any more about it, so I didn't know. All right, so praise dancers are, when are they, when are they dancing Friday, Friday, right? Friday. And then um, uh, you, Pastor Mason, is one of the speakers on Saturday. Amen. One of the speakers on Saturday. Um, Bishop George Donaldson Dawson is preaching Friday night. Um, let me see. And then the Shelby Five, they have a concert on Saturday. Saturday at 5 o'clock, so they're not having the service that night, they have a concert. And the concert includes the Shelby Five and there's somebody else. Jessica Say it one more time. Jessica Clemens. Jessica Clemens? Clemens, yeah. Clemens. Now I heard she's really good. I don't know. I've never heard her. I don't know. Did read what you say? She you know her, so she's good. Okay, well, we just gave us. Yeah. Um, so, um, and that's Saturday, Saturday evening. Um, and then, if you remember that on Friday, on Sunday afternoon, I am ministering for Life in Zion Church in um, Bloomfield Hills, 15 and Lord? No. Telegraph. Telegraph, 15 and Telegraph. That's at 5 o'clock on Sunday, and, and we're supposed to have our music ministry is, is, is going, right? Our music ministry is going, bless your heart. <laughs> All right. Because y'all don't want me to start to say, I'm going to sign for the music ministry. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, Sister Mona. Oh, yes. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise so the, Lord. the married couples luncheon is next Saturday, the 20th. So time is winding down. So yeah. if you have not played, hey, please see myself, Sister Yvette, and Joan, Sister Pat. We'll be um, available to take your payment. You can swipe, we can swipe your card, cash, $50 a couple. 
fifty dollars a couple. That needs to be a and, and we have um, uh, Evangelist Bowie yes. and her husband, and I hear that they're very good. Amen. They're very good, and I, I do recommend that the couples uh, take advantage of this. That you take advantage of this. Uh, it was good the last time we had Bishop Stephen Hall and his wife. So that last year, that was really good. And we're, it's going to be at the gazebo again. Yes. Now, we ought to own some stock in the gazebo. Right? Yes. Yeah. Nehemiah's Temple's gazebo. <laughs> um, any other announcements? Uh, oh, Dick and Joe Brown. Do you know where that's going to be? I do, but when you ladies had your thing at the Leo Tony Island, where is that? Is that 14 in Red Yes, that's what we're looking for. Oh, okay. All right. Sounds good. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. For the ones who have signed up for Friday, we should be in the church by 815. 815, we'll leave it at 8.30. Okay. So if you're not there, you're very young. You're gonna be waiting for God's <laughs> Thank you for driving and coordinating that. So that's. Do we have a van going on Saturday though? Yes. Yeah. What time should it be for Saturday? Same thing. We leave, we try to leave by eight thirty Saturday morning. Eight thirty Saturday. So we have two vans going up. Two vans going. Wonderful. All right. Praise God. That's. I, I appreciate that. Thank God for you. And I appreciate you all. Supporting this. Man, this is historic. First time that we're going to be in Grand Rapids for Council. Any other? Yes. Yes. Well, you know what? Yes. Yeah. So they know who it is, so they can send it directly to the people. They know who they are. I'm, what my point was that if you know who they are, you, know then you can send a direct, you can send a text directly to them, yeah. making sure that they they remember. Right. Deacon Pollock. Yes, sir. And uh, for all the brothers that's up there on Friday, I'll be looking for you to join in on the Michigan State Council Men's Choir and sing. Uh, we, we will have practice. We will have practice at five o'clock Friday evening there. Wow, that's that's exciting. It's the first time the brothers are going to be singing at five o'clock on Friday. Oh, seven o'clock. Practice at five. We're gonna sing at seven. Seven at the evening service. All right. Amen. I'll see you in tennis. Hey, hey, boy. Hey, hey, one more announcement, please. Y'all recruiting me. You recruiting me. Prize, uh, Dickerson. Yes, sir. You already got Brown, right? Yes, sir. Two of them. Two Brown. You know, Brown. Yeah. What about Walter? Oh, They're going to be at. So there's a number at the top of the ticket. If they call your number, they're going to pay your heating bill. Oh, they're going to pay your heating bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all of the tickets. <laughs>
We saw Sister Gabba win, lead the testimony, so we're going praise to you. Same thing with Brandon so I love that. We got workers, God said workers. And man, there's some other folks that, now, I'm going to tell y'all this. Uh, anybody, I'm going to have a picture of everybody that's in that choir from Nehemiah's Temple up there in Grand Rapids. I'm going to have a picture. And all them brothers that's in that choir, I'm going I'm to see them in the Nehemiah's Temple choir. The house needs them voices. Amen. And there's a number of people that I'm waiting for them to get in here. I heard Brother Lamont Brown really could sing. Amen. Amen. Trust me, Dick. Trust me, Dick. too. That's why I heard he was in there. What the? What the? What the? All right. And then, the other day, we was, we was here, and then the other voice broke out like he was a. Uh, So much, he just broke out. And <laughs> I'm gonna give you daddy. <laughs> he said, That's the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is yet moving. All right, God bless you. I love y'all so much. I love you. Yes, Evangelism. Yes, uh, Evangelism and Outreach is kicking off the council starting at 9 a.m. with yep. prayer.